next section that we are covering is 16.3. This section is on the acid-base properties of water. Specifically, there's two properties, two acid-base properties of water that we're going to talk about in this section. One, water is amphoteric. Amphoteric, which means that it is capable of acting as either an acid or a base. Just depends on what type of environment or what type of situation you put it in. Water can either be an acid or a base. Let's look at a couple examples. H2CO3 reacting with H2O. This is an equilibrium reaction. The products of this reaction are HCO3 minus and H3O plus. In this reaction, let's just focus on water. Let's see what water is doing. In this reaction, water is going from H2O to H3O plus. It did that by gaining an H plus, which means that in this particular reaction, it was a base. Let's look at another water situation. Let's react NH3 plus with H2O. This is also in equilibrium. This reaction makes NH4 plus and OH minus. And again, let's just focus on water. See what water is doing. In this reaction, water turned into OH minus. So it lost an H plus. And when it loses an H plus, that means it's an acid. So again, depending on what you are mixing with water, it could either be an acid or it could be a base. The other molecule is going to control the uh, identity of water in terms of whether it's an acid or a base. So this leads to the second interesting property of water, which is called auto-ionization. Auto-ionization is when you have two water molecules that are doing an acid-base reaction with no other molecules present. So one of the water molecules acts as the acid and the other one acts as the base. And this is pretty cool. So we're gonna write this, it's gonna look kind of weird because it's H2O plus H2O. This is also in equilibrium. And this makes H3O plus and OH minus. So let's see what's going on here. One of the water molecules is turning into H3O plus. The other one is turning into OH minus. The one that's turning into H3O plus is gaining an H plus. So it was the base in the reaction. The other water, mo water molecule is losing an H plus, so it was the acid in the reaction. So one is an acid and one is a base. It looks kind of weird to write H2O plus H2O, so let's write it a little bit nicer. Two H2O. And these water molecules are in the liquid state. Water, unless it's really cold or really hot, it's just gonna be in the liquid state. And it's in equilibrium with H3O plus and OH minus. The H3O plus and the OH minus, when it is formed, it's sitting in the unreacted H2O. Remember the equilibrium arrows mean that the reaction is not going into completion. That means that we have some H2O liquids hanging around in, in the beaker. So as we're forming H2, H3O plus, it's in water, it's aqueous. 
and as we form OH minus, it's aqueous as well. Because this is an equilibrium reaction, we can write an equilibrium expression, a K. Products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, leaving out solids and leaving out liquids. So this is what we learned at the end of 162. So starting with our products, we have H3O plus raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, which is 1. And then our other product, we have OH minus raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, which is 1. Our reactants are in the liquid state, which means we don't include them in the equilibrium expression. Liquids, we don't know what the concentration is. It doesn't have a concentration. It doesn't get included in the equilibrium expression. This equilibrium expression is called KW, W for water. And this is equal to the value of the KW constant is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Some resources call this, this whole thing right here, the ion product of water. I don't like to use that term, but you might come across it like on Alex or in your textbook or something. 